So let's talk about identity services, uh, Cisco's uh, uh, product that delivers on zero trust and allows you to actually manage that. Because that's a lot of hoops to jump through and how do we um, manage that. Sometimes uh, ICE, maybe you've been exposed to ICE before. Anybody using ICE today? Don? Yeah? Um, sometimes ICE uh, can seem uh, exceedingly complex. And it's because we feel like we have to answer all of these questions all of the time. Um, let me tell you, that's not the case. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit, but there's very specific use cases we go, uh, we go after. We don't have to go after all of them. Um, and I'll show those in a little bit. This is a bit of an overview, uh, just in line um, uh, with what we've been talking about. So a lot of times we have wired connections, we have wireless connections, we may have, coming across the internet, remote access, VPN connections of some kind. These are the ways that we access our network. ICE is gonna help us ask these questions of uh, who, when, what, where, uh, why, how, and some extra questions, uh, such as the health of a certain device, um, uh, threats, or, or uh, even vulnerability scores. And it's also going to give us a vi uh, some more visibility, which we'll touch on in a bit. So I mentioned those use cases. And here's some good examples. Um, Don, I might ask you, secure wired, secure wireless, VPN access, guest access. It's one of those use cases uh, sound like uh, what you have deployed. Anyone in particular? All the above. All the above, okay. Um, in addition to those, so guest access, for example, uh, you know, it's been a while that we've had this issue, um, and we solved it one way, um, and we've continued to solve it. ICE is a great starting point, centralized authentication point to this is my policy, and I'm going to ensure that policy is delivered consistently, um, uh, you know, using what I have set up in ICE. I might need to uh, secure all of my wired connections. Somebody comes into my building, they find a network jack, they plug in, do they have access? Is that port, you know, lit? Where can they get to? These kinds of things. Wireless is a little bit easier. I can sit out in the parking lot and uh, half the time get some kind of wireless signal. What access does somebody have if they're able to um, get on my network? Uh, other things here, asset visibility. Um, this just goes back to the reality that when I'm authenticating, everybody that accesses my network, I'm getting a lot of information. Those questions that I ask, who, what, where, when, why? Oh, now I have that information. That gives me a lot of ability to more intelligently apply some of my security policies. Um, I will go through each of these individually, um, but then it gets exciting, because now I have a bunch of information I can share uh, through some ecosystem integrations, some of that information uh, with other security tools that I am using currently. And uh, that leads us to the bottom one, where now if I see some kind of issue um, whether I'm getting that information from somebody else or I'm pushing that information out, I can start to change the access that I've granted to a particular endpoint. And that's our rapid threat containment solution. That's when it gets fun. All right, let's start with uh, secure, uh, actually let me skip this, secure, wired, wireless, and VPN. Um, again, I realize that ICE, at least from my perspective, has been given this uh, tag of like, complexity. Um, and uh, it can be if you're trying to consume every single one of those use cases right out of the gate. But let's just start with wired access. Somebody plugs into my network, I want to authenticate them. Um, and we're just going to go through a couple of the steps because you probably hear some terms um, when talking about access control such as 802.1x, EEP, authentications, uh, supplicants, and uh, it's not too bad, just those are the terms that we have to use. So let me walk through a little bit of what goes on here, um, and I think that might clear up a bit of the confusion. So for step one, I've got my endpoint here, and you can see a little tag underneath that. Hopefully you guys can see it in the back. Um, that says supplicant. This is just a little software package that is running on the endpoint. Any kind of modern operating system has a supplicant, that little software package, running on it. Sometimes we run into little IoT devices that do not have a supplicant, and we've got some workarounds for that. 
But in general, let's say it's a Windows laptop, I plug that in, the supplicant that is on that device is going to uh, send a message. That message is some kind of credentials, probably username and password, could be some kind of token, uh, however you choose to um, authenticate your devices. It's going to put that in EEP. We hear EEP a lot, there's a lot of different varieties. I'm no expert, but, uh, um, and which is why I just forgot, what does that stand for? John, pop quiz, EEP. Encapsulating authentication protocol? Everyone in this room believes us because we just said it confidently, yeah. So we, we take those credentials, extensible, almost everybody. Oh, did I give a clue here? Well, there you go. All right, we got to, uh, we got to the root of it. Extensible authentication protocol. Um, it's encapsulating that, uh, uh, those credentials, handing those off in a format that our next device, be it our switch, our access point, um, understands. Okay, great. The supplicant sends that over to the authenticator. Authenticator being the switch, the access point, what have you. Now he takes it and leveraging the 802.1x protocol says, okay, I've got to decide, am I going to grant access? What kind of access? Um, all those different things come into it. So who do I gotta talk to? My authentication server. Moving along, oh, click one more. So he's gonna contact the authentication server, um, probably using Radius, we can also use TACX, um, and send an access request. Say, I've got these credentials coming in, this token maybe, let's send that over. Now the authentication server generally looks to some identity store. Um, I would imagine majority of people um, are running Active Directory for their identity <coughs> store. Uh, might be on-prem, might be in the cloud, uh, you could have it, could be Google, um, but some kind of identity store that tells us, uh, here's our list. And the nice part about that is almost every organization I've uh, come in contact with already maintains this. Um, so we've already got some kind of identity store we can tap into and say, great, this is our list of approved users. Somebody leaves the company, they come off the list, they no longer have access anymore. They're probably in some kind of group where I can grant specific access to. Um, so a lot of that is already built out, we're just tying into that. So ICE in this case is going to uh, receive that radius request, send it over to the identity store, say, hey, look in your database please, and can you locate this record? And it says, yes, I found uh, Skippy Smith, and he is part of ABC Company, and so I can send that on. So really it's this four step process between the supplicant, which is just a little software package on the endpoint, uh, the authenticator, that's the network device, and then uh, ICE, uh, kind of the middleman between the identity store uh, and those devices. And hopefully we send that back and we're granted access. And now, Skippy Smith, this endpoint is granted access. Conversely, we get to say the port is unauthorized. Sorry, no access allowed. Or some kind of alternative access, some kind of quarantine of some kind until you can get authenticated. So, these are the fundamentals um, of 802.1x. And just in that very um, you know, first step, we'll say, with access control, I'm plugging into the network, I'm connecting to uh, wireless, uh, we're going to follow these principles and processes.